Hello, my name is Christian Williams. This is the Cirque 5A attempt. The date is October 23rd of 2021. Uh, this is fairly similar to the similar to the B and C attempts. Uh, we have, but we have added a new element, and I've also played around with the board a little bit to make it a little bit more cleaned up and more compact. Uh, so the purpose of this one, we're currently learning how to use our shift register, which you can see depicted on the right there. Uh, for the A attempt here. Um, looking with our LEDs, uh, we've learned that we can use this uh, integrated circuit to essentially do what we did in a previous uh, circuit where we had eight LEDs lined up in certain animations. But instead of having to use up all the pins on the Adreno board, we only have to use three. So this is similar to one of those animations or a demonstration of one of those animations from a previous project on this board, uh, but with an added component where I can set the speed or uh, cycle or lap of this animation using a potentiometer that I've wired into the board here. So it's fairly simple. Uh, this is the only time I'm going to admit to my professor that I kind of cheated a little bit in the sense that the wiring for this board is fairly simple, similar to this uh, screen here, but I've kind of shoved everything up a little bit to make more room for some more components and move the LEDs around and swap some wires uh, in various pins to get the kind of illusion of the animation I wanted. So it's a fairly simple thing to wire up, thankfully, just using the schematic here. Uh, but I did add an extra component as well. Um, so first off, we're going to talk about some details of the programming here. Uh, we have our pin definitions here, so we have our data, clock, and latch. Uh, to go a little bit into those uh, from our lecture, we learned that the clock, uh, our board is sending a constant stream of on, off, on, off, on, off, and the latch uh, eventually will save the state of one of, of one of that clock values and send it down to a series of gates. And depending on what those gates do in the circuit, whether it's an AND gate or a NOT gate or a NOR gate or something like that, um, that will cause the circuit to do various things. In this case, cause an LED to move around in a specific an animation. Uh, we also have our single LED manipulation. We have our initial LED state is zero. So our LED will st uh, start off in all cases. And we're using a new data type. Well, not new, we learned about this in chapter three, but we're using this data type called constant. So it's a constant integer on equals high. Uh, what this does is normally if you just have integer, like we can, we can now integer LED state equals zero. We can manipulate LED state to be more than zero later on the program, such as telling that LED state to turn on or turning it to half power or quarter power so on. Using this data type constant sets this integer to be fixed. So we cannot manipulate it later in the program. So for all, every single time that the code references this integer on, it always means high which makes sense. On and off mean high and low in the terms of the computer programming. What we've added is a potentiometer. So we also have to set up our uh, values for this. If you remember in previous projects, the potentiometer has to be set in one of the analog pins on the Arduino board. So in this case, I have it set to A0. Uh, there are five, six on this board, uh, zero through five, um, but I just put it into A0. Our initial value for the potentiometer will always be 0, and our initial delay time will be 10. This is important. If I set it to 0, it does some wacky things in the program, so I always set it to 10 milliseconds. Um, then we do our setup, so we're setting our three pin modes. There are only three pins, really, that we need to worry about here. The analog is handled separately because it's a potentiometer, and that gets defined in the loop. So our loop, the first thing we do this is where we define our potentiometer, is we take an analog read of the potentiometer pin, which is A0. And that tells us basically where we've turned the dial to. Uh, then we tell it to map that potentiometer, which has values of 0 through 1023, instead to 10 to 250. So this means that if I turn it all the potentiometer the uh, turn the dial all the way to off if you want to think of it like the volume dial in your car then that will set the that will set it instead to 10 if i turn the volume all the way up like in the dial with your car it will set it to 250 instead of 0 and 1023 this 10 and 250 are 10 milliseconds and 250 milliseconds and this is the time that um or program will use to set up that data here and uh I also realized that I set one of the values to pot. So my program is now doing pot. Uh, sorry, mom. 
Uh, then we move on to calculating which LED using our integrated circuit and defining how it's going to loop around. So once it gets to LED 7 or the 8th LED, instead of going to negative 1, it'll go back to the 0 position. And then our delay time here is now set to the potentiometer. So each time this program runs, it's going to take a new reading of the potentiometer and loop back around. So it's going to look at the potentiometer, do a lap, and then read the potentiometer. Do a lap, read the potentiometer. Do a lap, run the potentiometer, and so on and so forth. And then we have some additional information here. We are using change LED instead of digital write, and this is because we are using integrated circuit. All right, that was a lot of talking. This is what the actual circuit looks like in real life. So as you can see, I got rid of the header pins because we don't actually need them for this. Uh, and as you can see, it looks fairly similar to the circuit before, but you can see I kind of squished up the cords and the resistors all together, all nice and compact. I left the integrated circuit where it is since that's kind of like the focus of this program with the wires all the way to the left. But as long as it's in the same row, it doesn't really matter. So I could kind of clean this up even more if I really wanted to, if I was using a smaller breadboard. And I also have these two leads connecting here, so my negative and positive channels on this side of the board are receiving power from over here. And this is the potentiometer that we wired in. You can see that green cord going all the way to A0, and then it's of course connected to positive ground as well. I just explained in a supplemental video that if I wanted to do it reverse, that I could instead switch the negative positive and just get the opposite result. Uh, so that just changes what direction I have to turn the potentiometer to turn it up or down. Otherwise it doesn't really matter. And then you can see we've swapped out our LEDs for some brightly different colored ones. I have four whites, two blues, and two greens, just set up in a nice little pattern. And I have them offset a little bit to kind of get a illusion of a circle going on here. So as you can see, I'd not, it's not currently connected to my computer because I didn't want any weird lighting thing happening while I was showing what was on the computer. But the code is already loaded onto the board. So connecting it into my laptop for power. Does initial setup there. All right, and that is our delightful animation there. So with our potentiometer, currently that is the slowest it'll go. So each LED uh, will is set 250 milliseconds between each LED. So we have roughly two seconds of animation happening right now. But if I twist this potentiometer to about half, you can see we now are speeding up. Twist it a little bit more, speeding up. Oh, I suppose fair warning, uh, epilepsy warning or seizure warning with this because it can get rather bright and flashy. And we keep turning the potentiometer and you can see, and if we turn it all the way, you can see it's moving so fast that it looks like it's just turning on and off, but it is in fact still going in that loop. So we're going to slow it down. There we go. So yeah, this is uh, just the... My mother described it as a loading circle, which I thought was kind of funny. It, because I can change the speed on here, it actually kind of reminds me of, you know, the Windows loading screen where it says it'll take five seconds, it'll take 12 years, it'll take four minutes, it'll take a million years, it'll never load. It's kind of like that, except now I can do it with a circle instead. So <laughs> it's the loading circle of death. So. Uh, that was my Circ 5A attempt. I kind of had a little fun with this. Uh, uh, integrated circuits, shift registers, that sort of stuff. This is all new territory for me. So I am very interested in learning more about these and how they operate um, and how to use them to the fullest extent. Um, so I didn't do anything super, super extravagant uh, like I have in previous A attempts, simply because this is all new ground for me. But I still had a lot of fun. Uh, thank you for watching.